Excellent. So let's talk about this, Jeff. Give us the setup for the Dell Venue 8 7000. I've heard good things about this tablet, which I, to be honest, don't really expect good things from Dell when it comes to mobile devices like this. But does it surprise? Does it does it uh, beat expectations? It's, I don't know if it surprises. I think it's it was hyped as, as early as, I think, September at, at IDF. And it's sort of they trotted it out and built it as the thinnest tablet ever. It's, it's 0.1 millimeters thinner than an iPad Air. Um, and that's kind of the least interesting thing about it. Uh, it has this amazing, it's an 8.4 inch OLED display with a 2560 by 1600 resolution. Uh, with incredibly sharp, incredibly vibrant display. Uh, under the hood, it's got a Moorefield-based Atom processor, so you've got quad x86 cores combined with power VR graphics. Uh, the graphics capabilities are similar to what you'd get in an iPad Mini 3 or an iPhone 5Fs. Uh, it's got this RealSense 3D depth camera that combines uh, a normal rear camera with two 720p cameras to give you kind of embedded depth information in still pictures that you can do kind of some fun stuff with the uh, various filters and, and you sort of take measurements of real world objects in a, in a still image. Hmm. Um, and then it's got kind of just some, some smart features. Like it's got a, a micro SD slot that takes cards up to 512 gigs, which I don't even think exist. Wow. Uh, and it's got, you know, a fairly lightweight Android install. It's just a really good all around tablet that has a couple of really standout features like the screen, which has these really thin bezels all around it that, um, you know, it's a premium device. It's a $400 tablet. It's basically priced against the, the iPad mini. And I think it's the, the best tablet uh, or best Android tablet you can buy right now. And it may even be the best tablet sort of overall. Hmm. Wow. It's like you got a hangnail there. Yeah, probably. I'm not Look at that. really big on manicures. Dude, that, that looks painful. Can I be honest, though? I think one of the challenges I have with, with the reviews like this is it's really kind of hard to get the sense of how good that display is when you try and take it with a, the picture of the camera. It oh, doesn't yeah. translate. Well, but, but you know, I think Jeff did a good job. Jeff, let's flip, no, no, I'm let's, not no, let's flip to the next page because we have right here uh, the Shield tablet which is kind of a mediocre, okay IPS display next right. to the Venue 8. And even though this is, you know, not the a perfect reproduction of everything, you can see there's better color contrast oh, and saturation yeah. on the OLED display. And it looks like the Venue 8 is higher resolution, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, versus the, the Shield is only 1920 by 1200, so the difference between that is, I mean, it's it's double the megapixels of the Shield tablet and one more megapixel than you get in a Nexus 9 or a, an iPad Mini 3. Um, it's it's one of those things that's a little bit past the point of diminishing returns. You, you have to get real close to it to see any of the pixels, uh, but it's the combination, the really high pixel density, and then just the really vibrant colors that you get with this OLED display and really <laughs> deep blacks and thin bezels. Okay. So it kind of, it looks more like a next gen display than than anything else I've seen, short of you know the the Galaxy Note 4, which is based on the the same display technology. Yeah, and and so Jordan, to further push the point that we could actually, he did a pretty good job of showing us stuff. So look at this now, the Shield tablet. That looks like a very regular type of sub-pixel array there with uh, RGB, RGB, RGB. Just just pretty much square. And then look at this. This has got to be a different type of sub-pixel arrangement. There's a little bit of checkerboarding. The, 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 the straight edges are actually fringed on this. So this is like Pentile or something like that, right? I'm yeah. sorry. Are we looking? Which 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 image are you looking at? I'm looking Stop. at the the zoomed <laughs> the 30 in 30 second delay. The, the zoom. Oh <laughs> he yeah, can't he, he can't see. Oh, There's the zoomed zoom, in oh, on yes, the Venue yes, 8 display, that. and um, you can tell this is actually OLEDs are often like this. Uh, they're not just a, a regular straight RGB square grid. Um, so Jeff, have you have you looked into what exactly the pan the panel's subpixel arrangement is? I know you can't tell by looking at it. You gotta like get no, a microscope I think it's the or the same panel as what's in the the Galaxy, I think the Tab Pro eight point four. 
Okay. Samsung makes an 8.4 inch display with a, or an 8.4 inch tablet with the exact same resolution and an OLED panel. Um, so I think it's basically that panel that's that's just been used in this in this tablet. And Jordan, there was a day when I really didn't like those pentile or non regular subpixel yeah. layouts. But having looked at the Note 4 OLED, it's just awesome. It's just it doesn't matter. I mean they they've nailed it. The 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 definition on it, the PPI it's high PPI and you can argue about how you count that given the the weirdness at the subpixel level, but the sharpness of the screen is is outstanding. And Jeff, I'm t I take it that in this case it's sort of a similar thing. Your your reaction to it is it's just excellent. Yeah, the the screen is phenomenal. I would almost recommend the tablets solely on the basis of the screen. It's it's sort of this one of these standout features that come along every once in a while when there's kind of a transition to the next generation of technology and this kind of feels what the screen is like on uh, on this tablet. And so there's a, Although it is a little oversaturated. I I don't mind that so much. I've actually <laughs> grown a little bit fond of that. Um, unlike the the Note 4, it doesn't have a, an alternate profile color profile that adheres more strictly to kind of a, a standard sRGB color space, which would be nice to have, um, especially for sort of photographers and, and content creation uh, professionals who might really like the screen uh, but want something that's a little more accurate to a, a color space that they may be targeting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's a phenomenal display, and for a tablet, the display is most of you know, the experience. There's a lot of stuff going on behind it, but that's sort of your your window on, on content. So Yep. Yeah, so that there here's the the color gamut is just way wider than SRGB, whereas a lot of other devices are really pretty constrained. And it's kinda weird because like literally you can just see more colors with the Venue 8. The problem is like there's not really a standard for authoring content that includes those colors. And so if <clears throat> if it's using them, it's because it's stretching out the gamut of existing content to places it never was intended to be. So, yeah. Um, Which looks kind of surreal and awesome. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what they with the Note 4. It's like, wow, this is amazing. This is like some type of dream sequence or something. But it doesn't look anything like the picture. Like, doesn't look anything like what I actually just photographed but it looks better maybe i don't know <laughs> it's looks kinda, how i wish it would right it's kind of trippy so anyway so it's a good display all around i guess we don't want to get in the weeds on delta e and stuff do we <clears throat> no but no it's a good display all around um the performance is it's sort of good all around it's not an exceptional performer and sort of benchmarks it's not at the top of the graphs in a lot of them especially in the gaming benchmarks as well as well it doesn't really i mean it can't compete with the shield tablet which has a substantially more powerful gpu um, but it's just kind of a good all-around performance um, picture it works fine in games even at the native resolution um so it's a it's a very capable tablet from a performance perspective, even if it's not something that's gonna you know come out ahead in in all the benchmarks. Uh, load times are also fast, which is something that can be a concern with x86 tablets if you're getting into um, binary translation, where you've got code that was originally programmed for ARM processors. Um, but that's probably going to become less of an issue with Android 5.0 Lollipop, which has a, a new runtime environment that's supposed to be cross-platform. That is one of the downsides of this tablet. It doesn't have a uh, Lollipop update yet, um, but, but the best we've got out of Dell in terms of a timeline is in the coming months they're planning on releasing it, but their, their pitch is that they want the experience to be sort of flawless when they release it. Um, so they're not going to do so in, until they've sort of buttoned everything down and, and have a completely smooth experience throughout. I'm, I'm shocked to see, Jeff, shocked to see that the Intel-powered tablet does best in Web Expert, which, <laughs> yeah, is, which is Intel's favorite benchmark. Surprising. It's, it is surprising. For I can't imagine why that is. detection through a web browser needs. I just, it's, it's yeah, that's how uncanny. That's, that's just shocking. Anyway. So uh, the the Morefield uh, is it's Atom processor based on what Silvermont core? Silvermont core, so the same cores as Bay Trail, the same twenty two nanometer fab process, uh, but unlike Bay Trail, which has a, a cut down version of the Ivy Bridge GPU, this has a, a Power VR 
uh, GPU inside. Right. So, so the graphics are a different animal. And so, what what GPU is it, and where do we know it from anywhere else? Uh, it's a PowerVR G sixty four thirty, I believe. It's it's basically the same as what you get in an iPhone five S and uh, an iPad Mini three, both of which are based on Apple's A seven SoC. Jordan, you have so one of those. It's not even a particularly hmm. new GPU, but it uh, seems to be potent enough for, for at least the stuff I've been doing with the tablet. So, Angry Birds? Yeah, I, I played some slightly more real games than that. A little, bit of, a little bit of Minecraft, a little bit of Riptide GP, Asphalt 8, which is a car racing game. I mean, it can play, it, it's not going to play, well, it's certainly not going to play the Tegra optimized stuff that only runs on that platform. And it's not going to give you probably as smooth a performance as you'll get from a tablet like that with a more powerful GPU. Um, it was a little bit of hitching that I got in, in Riptide and Asphalt in you know, a couple of cases where there's a lot going on on the screen. Um, nothing that sort of ruined the experience, certainly not more than the kind of awkwardness I feel whenever I'm playing games on a, a touchscreen device. Um, so it isn't the best gaming GPU out there, but... Yeah, I mean, it's even sort of what you would call a real tablet game. It's fine for, in my experience. Mm -hmm. So how does this how does this stack up to like a Shield tablet? Let's see. Yeah. So it's about about half the performance of a uh, of a Shield tablet in in terms of graphics. It looks like. It's just this is not the latest stuff from Imagination Tech. Either right, because they've got power VR mm -hmm. GPUs. iPhone six plus is faster, and then they have the eight X A eight X, which is even faster still. Yeah. <coughs> I don't think this is really, you know, designed as a gaming tablet though. It's uh <coughs> you know, there's not a whole lot of that in, in Dell's literature on it, I don't think. I think they're targeting this more at sort of business users. Um, so the fact that they can play games is good, the, and especially since you're playing them at a, at a higher resolution than you would be at a, any of those competing tablets if you're doing native gaming. Um, but even at the native resolution, I didn't I didn't have any issues. So yeah, that was the, that's the thing that is a little bit unusual about this to me is that the GPU is not very beefy given the display resolution. Um, yep. So how much does this thing cost? Four hundred by well three ninety nine. Okay, and it's only available in a six gig or a sixteen gig version right now, which is a little bit annoying to have to sort of rely on micro SD for expansion and not even to provide a higher capacity version. But Dell does tell us that a thirty gig or a thirty two gig version is in the works, and there's apparently an LTE version as well that's on the way. I guess if your comparison is iPad Mini and it has the same GPU as this with a slightly lower display resolution, this isn't too bad. And I think this has a higher GPU clock maybe than the Mini, so not too bad. It may, yeah. And then, it, I mean, the other <coughs> comparison is the, the Nexus 9, which has uh, the dual-core version of the Tegra K1 processor. So it has the same GPU as the Shield tablet uh, and a different processor. Um, but the differences between those two tablets are I mean, the build quality from from what the time I've spent with the Nexus 9 sort of in-store is, is not <coughs> great compared to the Dell, uh, which is exceptional even compared to the iPad. And Nexus 9 costs how much? Same price, okay. $399. So, for... so you're looking at, a, actually, I think the Nexus 9 is quite a bit beefier chip, but the, the display and build quality aren't, aren't as good as this. Right. Okay. And battery life looks like decent. Excellent. 14 hours in our web browsing test, which is longer than wow. any of the devices that we've tested, uh, or at least for this review. So yeah, and it's it's been great sort of on and off, you know, usage as well. We got nine hours in the in our our sort of new uh, video playback test, um, and then you know shorter for gaming. But even in the gaming test, it's you know much longer battery life than the Shield tablet. So. Hmm. Although lower performance, so <clears throat> that's probably the, the drawback. Well, there. I mean, if, if you're still playing the game, <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, if you're getting a higher frame rate, I don't think that really matters if you're, you know, your tablet dies an hour and a half earlier. Right, right, right. Well, no, battery life is nice. Let's talk about the camera, though, because this is maybe one of the most distinctive things. This is Intel's Very own interesting. tech, right? Well, it's it's 
kind of weird because this is not the same as the real tech stuff that they demoed <laughs> previously. Uh, when they first trotted out this real sense <clears> stuff, <throat> it, it's all built onto a module and designed to be kind of a user facing camera on a notebook. Um, so everything comes on this little module. It includes an ASIC on the module that does processing associated with the depth camera. Here, what they're using is a bunch of off the shelf parts and tying it together with software. So you've got a, a normal camera for still images, and then you've got two 720p cameras. And these aren't sort of special cameras as far as I can tell. It's just straight cameras and they use the images from those two cameras overlaid on top of the image from the main camera to give you some depth information and then all the processing is done on the the Atom processor. It takes about 12 seconds to actually sort of crunch all of the data uh, and then let you go in there and, and do things with the depth information. So, uh, so you so shoot a picture and you wait 12 seconds and then you can go manipulate the picture? Uh, well, you can continue shooting pictures, but if you then want to go and manipulate them, then you have to wait the 12 seconds for them to process, although though it does background processing when you're not um, using stuff. So you can take multiple pictures in quick succession, but if you do want to edit them right away with the depth information, you do have to wait for the, the processing to complete. And the depth stuff is for you, the, the, the rear-facing camera. Yeah, it's only for the rear-facing camera, and it's not... You can't get sort of a 3D map of images. You can't use this to scan objects like you can with the other RealSense stuff. This is only for, at, at least right now, for applying some special filters and focus stuff uh, in this Dell Gallery app. And then they've got some measurement functions where you can measure linear distances and um, two-dimensional area as well. So, so let me get this straight. <clears throat> so when you're saying you can measure things... The idea is that you can, like, point to a couple of objects in your picture and say, you know, give me the depth, and it will tell you how far apart they are in terms of depth just by pointing to them? Is that what it uh, is? Well, or? it'll do distance between two points on the image. So it's... Right. It's, I don't know if they... The, none of the demos... I haven't tried to use it to measure distances between things. I presume I'm just... I have just use it to measure sort of lengths and widths and, and things like that. But it should work... If you just wanted to do a distance between two points arbitrarily, <laughs> so that's um, like a, well. that's basically a distance between two points in 3D space. Yeah. So if I'm pointing in the playground, and I'm like, there's a teeter totter and there's a slide. It's going to give me an as the crow flies like distance between the two, just by because it has depth depth information in the image capture. Right. Okay. And so. Explain to me about the focus part of this, because I'm trying to figure out like that's neat, but it's a little bit like, who wants that? You know, it's it's some well, people it's, do, but not everybody. The the like focus that thing for a though. lot of things. Oh, but <laughs> yeah, but but the focus thing is this like, can I if I if I shoot an image and it's out of focus, can I then like change the focus after the fact? You can change the focus after the fact, but I don't think you're going to gain focus if it didn't exist before. <clears throat> One of the problems with this is that the, the camera is just not very good. So the shots that you take, you can separate objects from the background, but I haven't had a situation where I had a shot where something was out of focus in the original and I was then able to, to sort of recover um, focus. But you can shift the, the focus in a shot where sort of everything looks um, like it's in focus. Hmm. So it's a little gimmicky. It's 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 a cool capability that's kind of weird because it's in a tablet, which is not it's really a go-to device for taking pictures. And then there's some weirdness with, you know, the natural way to hold the tablet ends up covering up the cameras. So it's sort of awkward to even take pictures on top of the awkwardness that you feel while taking pictures with a tablet because then you're that guy. Um, and then the, the effects are, you know, some of them work well, some of them don't work sort of quite as well. Um, so it's kind of a neat little capability, um, but it's something that feels a little bit like an early revision that, that needs to get fleshed out and is, is maybe going to be more effective in a device that's more conducive to taking pictures in the first place. Hmm. This feels like a hardware feature that they need to go ahead and roll out and then let, like, other people develop the software for it who are more creative with the, like here's well, what you can do that's their thing they're very keen I was talking to the, the intel guys behind this and they're saying that they want to have depth information in every still image and, and every video 
and that's kind of what they're working towards with RealSense, and they're working with developers to figure out what to do with all that information what, once it's captured, because once you have that depth information, you basically do what you want with it. Um, so they've, they've figured out the capturing of the information, and now it's just a question of, of what developers are going to do with it, and what sort of form factors we're going to get these cameras in. I mean, you can imagine that at some point the, the camera that they had intended for notebooks is going to become something that's viable for a tablet, and then you have sort of gesture recognition and an actual 3D mapping of things in a in a more complete way than what you're doing here. So, mm, okay, the potential for this stuff is really cool. Um, it's just this particular implementation is a very limited form of real sense compared to what they've sort of pitched for notebooks, um, and a lot of it is kind of like this Instagram effect stuff because um, the measurements are not you know super accurate either they're estimates and the effective range is kind of three to 30 feet and it seems to be you know fairly lighting dependent you need a fair bit of light even to take a decent <clears throat> shot and then the the depth stuff seems to be especially sensitive to having adequate light as well hmm. okay well it's 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 interesting is it is it a, it's an okay camera otherwise just for still well, you were saying the the depth ones aren't great, but well, it's it's that's the thing is it's just it's just an okay camera in terms of picture quality. You know, it's I I took a couple of pictures on the shield just to see how it compares, and it's they're both kind of just okay. I mean, oh, it's, it's not, not any better than the shield. Not really, no. I mean, Ooh. in terms of just like a straight camera shot, it's it's not a, a so it's, and it has more megapixels, but it's the lens is is not doing it for the the camera. I don't know if it's the sensor or what, but it's yeah, guys. For for reference, Jordan or Cyril, I guess you guys don't have a, a shield tablet. Either one of you, that nope. that is a that is not a phone class uh, camera. It's lower mm. grade. Like they, a lot of times in tablets they do this. They'll put something in, but it's not as good. And in this case, like the Shield tablet camera is kind of a dog. So if this isn't much better than that, honestly, speaking of dogs, those pictures look better than the Shield tablet cameras. <laughs> well, it's because they're or it's saying the article. Whose dog is that? Again? down. They work really nicely. That's my dog. Right. Aww. But uh, so yeah, if you shrink down, you know, a full resolution image to something that you might put on a web page or put on Instagram or Facebook, then it looks fine. Um, but if you're actually looking at the full resolution image, it's it's not good. Okay. It's this is not a device I would take a picture with, even though I can do cooler stuff with it. Right. Once the the image is captured. Okay. So um, we're gonna give away all here, Jeff. Let's let's just go down here and look at this. TR recommended award for the Venue 8. So you already kind of said it may be the best Android tablet out right now. Um, yep. So I, I'm taking from that that the user experience is good, the performance is good overall. You already said the graphics are not really a problem with the, the display resolution uh, that it has. And the display itself is awesome, right? Yeah. So is this is this also, did they, they make a claim this is the thinnest tablet? They do, and it is, as far as I can tell, it's six millimeters, and the iPad Air is six point one millimeters. And I kind of, it's an academic difference that I think is is largely meaningless. Um, it's cool what they've squeezed into a form factor this small, and that they haven't really sacrificed battery life to get there. Um, but the thinness is kind of the least interesting thing about it for me. Yeah, you know, I have to say, having used Lollipop on the Shield tablet and the Nexus Seven for like how long like a month or two now i'm kind of glad that they haven't gone straight to it yet my, my experience has not been smooth it's it's slower feels slower and i've had problems on both devices um i don't know about you jeff you've got a shield tablet with lollipop right yeah i haven't been using it a lot since this thing showed up i imagine not but but this is kitkat i assume yep and, and that's the thing is kitkat works it's fine it's you know, they, they've done some nice things with the UI where instead of just making all of the icons the same size and using more pixels, they actually pack more icons onto the home screen. Um, you know, the, the default font size is smaller. You can increase it, but it's smaller, and the, the information density is just so high with this display that I barely even zoom in reading, you know, desktop optimized websites because the text is that clear just at the, the full page view. Mm. That's pretty good. 